Hello, today we'll deal with the treatment of heart failure and we're dealing with ACE inhibitors. That's an abbreviation of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. We have medications that are ending with pril, ramipril, enalapril, lisinopril, perindopril, and the doses are ramipril 5 mg twice a day, enalapril 10 mg twice a day, lisinopril 20 mg once a day, or then we have perindopril which is used when we get a side effect of these medications, which is hypotension, which is a low level of blood pressure. Because, for example, if we have a patient who has heart failure with a normal blood pressure, and we give ACE inhibitors, which is usually reducing blood pressure, then we will get a too low blood pressure. And the patient will become dizzy, he will fall down and complain of dizziness. Okay, and therefore it's very important that you change to perindopril, which is a long-acting ACE inhibitor instead. It will not cause a big spike, a big, big increase of effect and a drop in uh, blood pressure. But usually, most of the patient actually has a hypertension. Most of them. Who has, those who have heart failure usually also have hypertension. This is very common to get seen together. And therefore, uh, ACE inhibitors are go good for both of these. And also for those who have diabetes mellitus. Because diabetes mellitus can cause kidney disease. This is called diabetic nephropathy. And ACE inhibitors will delay the, 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 it will delay the kidney disease due to diabetes mellitus. And that's very good also. It will also uh, reduce the risk of stroke and myocardial infarction. And as you can see here, the five most deadly, most common diseases, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, heart failure, myocardial infarction and stroke, most five common ones are all attacked by ACE inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors have been seen that it will increase the survival of the patient. It will reduce the hospital stay. It will reduce the diabetic nephropathy. It will reduce stroke. It will reduce myocardial infarction. It will reduce hypertension. It's perfect. It's very good. Not perfect, but it's very, very good. Okay, and therefore we give ACE inhibitors to almost all patients of heart failure. Diuretics are used for all patients, but ACE inhibitors are used for almost all patients. Why? Heart failure can be divided into reduced ejection fraction and preserved ejection fraction. Preserved is when we have ejection fraction is more than 50%. That is normal. Uh, reduced is when we have less than 40% of ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is the volume of blood that's excreted from the heart, from the left ventricle into the blood, uh, into the bloodstream, into your whole body. And if we have more than 50% of blood in the, right, uh, in the left ventricle being excreted, that's normal. If only 40% of this volume of blood in the left ventricle is excreted, then we have a reduced ejection fraction heart failure. Heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, abbreviated as HFREF. Okay? And it has been seen that ACE inhibitors are best against reduced ejection fraction. It's also good for preserved one, but it has been shown that the, the result is not so, not so uh, good when we compare this, okay? It's, it, it's, it's not so, uh, uh, what, what would you say? Uh, the result is good, but uh, the research cannot really show that this uh, good result was because of ACE inhibitors, okay? So the survival will increase for both groups. That's the most important thing you need to remember. So you can give ACE inhibitors preserved ones, but especially for reduced one. And as we said, most of the patients actually have diabetes mellitus or hypertension, and then ACE inhibitors are good to use for both of these uh, diseases. And ACE inhibitors, what do we do? Before we start medication, we need to measure the kidney function and electrolytes. So we take a blood sample and we, and we measure that. We see that, for example, the kidney function is good, then we can start ACE inhibitors. We start ACE inhibitors and then suddenly the kidney, the creatinine increases. It seems that the kidney function uh, got worse. Why? It's because of the medication itself. ACE inhibitors can increase the creatinine level. So don't be afraid if you see an increased creatinine after ACE inhibitors. Don't stop the medication. Continue the medication because that's only a reversible increase of creatinine. Because ACE inhibitor attacks efferent arterioles of the glomerulus in the kidney. So in the kidneys we have glomerulus. The glomerulus is filtrating blood to urine. And in this process, you have an efferent arteriole going into the glomerulus. And if you dilate that one, which ACE inhibitors does, 
it dilates the efferent arteriole, then the pressure drops and the flow drops because you increase the volume of this artery. And if you, and when it flows slower now, then the filtration is slower, which means that less creatinine is released into the urine and more is preserved in the blood. And then when you take a blood sample, you see this high amount of creatinine. And as a doctor, you think that the patient has a kidney problem, but not. He only took these ACE inhibitors. So what you can do is you continue the medication. If the creatinine is still high and it continues to increase, 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 then you can stop diuretics. You can stop non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If it does not help with these two measures, then you need to reduce the ACE inhibitor a little bit. Okay. And the same goes when you titrate the ACE inhibitors, um, you need to slow the titration. What does titration mean? We always start with the lowest dose of ACE inhibitors. We start with lowest dose when we start, and then we sudden we 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 uh, increase it. Uh, let's say every two weeks, and in a span of two months, we have increased it into the target dose. And the target dose will be the dose that is not causing symptoms. The patient feels better. The heart pump is functioning uh, good now. And this is the target dose that we continue for one year or many many years. And of course, we check it regularly by a family doctor. And, and in that sense, we can uh, have a stable patient with a target dose. And this has, be, this has to be, uh, be reached within around two months of period. Okay. So the importance of this whole story was that measure electrolytes and kidney function before you start medication and measure it one week after, one month, three months after, six months, one year after, and continuously uh, every year with uh, with the control of family doctor good once again just to repeat the doses ramipril 5 milligram twice a day enalapril 10 milligram twice a day lisinopril 20 milligram once a day and then we can use perindopril whenever we get hypotension with the other medications and please remember the contraindications pregnancy is contraindicated we have cough angioedema, the ki bad kidney function, and so on. I thank you very much for listening.